Karen and welcome to another episode of Spiritual Superpowers. Obviously this is Dawn here with me as well and today we're going to talk about self-care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah so self-care is one of the most important things that we can do um, and master in our lives but it can also be one of the most challenging um, and self-care means all different things to all different people. And I think a lot of people think of self-care as just general hygiene, like having a shower, brushing your teeth and all those things, but it's so much more. It's more about incorporating things that optimize your well-being in mind, body, and spirit, right? Yes. Not just the physical, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You're nurturing, you're replenishing, and then it's also important for us to do things that are joyful so that our energy is is elevated and we continue to elevate because that's one of the things that we are here to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why don't we go over some of the more popular ways that people do self-care? Mm -hmm. Well, there's some that people don't like to do. <laughs> Let's start we'll, with that one. We'll start, well, a couple of those first. First one is exercise. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and I think, you know, when I talk to people about exercise, I kind of tell them to find something they enjoy. Because if you enjoy it, you're going to do it, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Again, we have that mindset where we should either be going to the gym every day for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, we should be doing yoga. Even though I love yoga, Karen's a yoga instructor. We're pro <laughs> yoga. Not everyone is. Yeah. <laughs> um, or people think, yeah, you should be going out running or biking. But really, anything that gets our body moving Mm -hmm. um, and create some form of activity that we enjoy is considered exercise. Like a walk in nature. Exactly. Yeah, walk in nature, mm -hmm. gardening, mm -hmm. dancing, mm -hmm. you know, swimming, anything that, that, you know, that gets us moving. But in case you want to do yoga, we'll include a little link above to uh, a little yoga video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Karen has lots of them. I yes. have lots, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's something to think about. And then the next one that people don't like, but is really good for you, is meditation. Yes, the M word. The M word. <laughs> <laughs> and after seeing our numbers on the meditation videos, we know that it's definitely not a favorite among our viewers. <laughs> But if you are curious about some of the meditation videos, we'll include a link up above. <laughs> and we still highly recommend it, even, yes. even if there might be a little resistance out there. Yeah. Give it a try. Because there are so many different types and you don't have to sit there in silence, try and clear your mind for 20 minutes or an hour or an hour and a half. Just intentionally setting three or five minutes aside to just sit with yourself is, is considered a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. And it's so good for the body. Mm -hmm. And another way that I think a lot of people um, like when they're doing it is journaling. Yeah, yeah. journaling. Well, journaling was another one on, on the list of the mm -hmm. top self-care um, activities exactly. or exercises. Yeah, so whether it's writing down your thoughts, your feelings, what you did that day. Um, I, I do journal, not regularly, but I do. And I do go back and actually read things mm -hmm. on what I was journaling or whatever point in time I was. And it's neat. It's kind of like going back and reading your diary. <laughs> yeah, what I like to do is a gratitude journal. So you write down at the end of the day, you know, the things that you're grateful for or the good things that happened to you that day. And even on your worst days, there always is something good. Like it was sunny and nice out today. Mm -hmm or someone held the door open for me. Even on your worst days, you mm -hmm. can always think a few of, of a few of those. And if you are having a bad day, go back and look in that journal and it's amazing how many great things happen to you each day, right? That's right, yes. So, yeah, that's a really good one. Okay, there's, there's more one. that people won't like to hear, but <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about it anyway. And uh, another thing is um, trying to maintain a healthy diet. But it's not about going on a diet. That's not what we're mm -hmm. trying to say here. It's adopting a lifestyle of healthy eating. That's right. That supports you and like for the years to come. You know, you're, you're giving yourself the best fuel for where you are and down the road. <laughs> and then we want to talk about doing things that bring you joy. Yes. And this one sounds easy. 
But it, I have to say, when I started to learn how to do self-care, I honestly thought it was people who go get facials or get their hair done or get their nails done. And honestly, I'm not one of those people. I don't like sitting in a, in a salon getting my hair done. I really don't like getting manicures and pedicures, but I kept going and doing them regularly, thinking that that was self-care, but it wasn't joyful. And it took me some time to actually learn the things that bring me joy. And just because those things bring someone else joy, doesn't mean that it's right for you. That's right, and I had mm -hmm. to find what makes me happy, what I enjoy doing. And honestly, walking in nature, doing yoga, meditating, and then if I was to do more spa treatments, I love body treatments, and I love Thai yoga massage. So those are the things that I really enjoy, and that bring me joy, and that's my form of self-care. So I think it is important for people to, um, sure, look at what other people are doing, but really pick the things that that you know make your heart sing yeah and it could be somewhat work related like you could be volunteering and doing mm -hmm. something that really brings you joy and purpose right. you know? or playing with grandkids playing with your own kids playing mm -hmm. with animals mm -hmm. there's so many different things yeah. gardening like anything like that 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 just you know you just feel so good doing it yeah. that's definitely a really good um, form of self-care and play as well. Play has been proven to be really good at self-care. Yeah. And uh, another important one, having a community, having friendships, having and interacting with people is important. Find your tribe. Find your tribe. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, we do have a Facebook group. If anyone did want to um, connect with people who are like-minded, we, yeah, we have our own little spiritual superpowers uh, Facebook group for, for our little tribe. And so feel free to pop over there and or click on the link below and, and join our tribe. And Instagram. And Instagram as well. And something else that it's important to have interaction and, and community, but I'm also, I'm an introvert introvert, or an introverted introvert. Yeah, and I need my alone time. And, and again, it took me a long time to figure that out. Yeah, so it's interesting that two introverts started a YouTube channel where they're <laughs> yes. putting themselves out there, yeah. but, but balancing that with alone time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So recognizing how much alone time you need and what does that mean? Is it for you just to sit and read a book? Is it to have a bath? Mm -hmm. Is it to go for a walk alone in nature, go for a run? And unplugging from that social mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. We like that you're following social media, but there's times where you need to unplug. I think everybody does, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, so those are really good ways for us to uh, to have that self care, mm -hmm. and Karen and I, speaking of self care, we just went away to a spa out in Bancroft, Grail Springs, and we did um, some self care ourselves. It was really nice. We packed the car, we drove like four hours, talked the whole way, talked the whole <laughs> way, and then got this. You know, it was a real getaway. It felt like we we got away from it all. We unplugged. Uh, they served very nutritious vegan food. And no coffee. No coffee, <laughs> only herbal tea. Yeah. And they had a bunch of activities, both indoor and outdoor, as well as treatment services. So we really had our pick. So one of the really neat uh, treatments that I did was a bioenergy photo, where they basically, well, they're not taking a photo, although it looks like they are. You actually put your hand on a bioresonance machine and it measures your auras and it, and it depicts what it looks like on, this, on the computer screen. And it also measures vibrational quality of your, each of your chakras. There were some things that I expected and some things that I did not. Mm -hmm. So that was very cool and we'll go into that a yeah. little bit more in another episode. That's right, so stay tuned for that yeah. so you can find out where Karen was caught off guard. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then as I mentioned, one of the, the spa treatments that I like to do, which I don't get to do very often, so I jumped at this one, was a Vichy body wrap. It was actually my first time having a Vichy, which is where there's you, you're on like a massage table with, with um, a shower head over top. So. Uh, you lay there, they, they scrub you down to exfoliate, they put mud, more mud all over the body, and then they let you sit with the mask on the body while they give you a nice scalp massage, 
and then to rinse they turn on the jets and the, the shower washes the mud off and then you dry off you go to a massage table and they give you a full body massage while they apply a moisturizing cream so i i don't know what it is about those treatments i just love I them i think i know what is it i think the mud is like grounding like it's that earth element and you probably are grounding somewhat i know you need i love grounding. to do grounding mm -hmm. regularly we all do um so and then think of the the water cleansing that off what do you think about that that, that definitely may make sense because yeah. yeah i'm someone who definitely needs to earth a lot and i don't know if i do it, have to do it more than the regular the more than the average person but it's something that i I feel I need so that's really important and then yeah doing the the wash afterwards is almost like an energetic cleanse so mm -hmm. that could be it and we are going to do another episode later on too about earthing and grounding and all the different ways that you can do it and why it's so important mm -hmm. just from um, an energy hygiene standpoint right yeah and then we also went to an equine meditation mm -hmm. so all we did was just meditate in a circle while this horse kind of wandered around to each of us and flooded us with this beautiful equine energy. It was all silent. There wasn't, you know, any talking. Um, and of course, we've done some episodes on equine psychotherapy, which we'll include. Um, but this was a little different. This was just kind of meditating and sitting in the energy of this amazing horse called Choco. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was really neat because each time we do it seems to be a little different than the last. Everyone yeah. seems to have their own way. And this one, yeah, you just, you sat in a meditation, the horse walked around and you could feel when he was done with you and your energy and moved on to someone else. And then I don't know if you could, but I could almost tell when it was me, my time for him to come back to me. Mm -hmm. And then, and I believe we both felt this when it was done, you could tell when we were all balanced and he had done his treatment, we felt like, okay, he's done. And he walked to the gate. <laughs> he, he said like, my work is done yeah. here, you know, but then the hour wasn't quite over. So the facilitator brought him back to do another right. pass. But honestly, I think he was right. I think he, it, I think everyone was balanced. Yeah, I felt like everyone was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was just, it was. It was very synchronistic. Like I felt like I got to take a deep breath in. I sighed. Everyone else felt very neutral. Like there wasn't any energy coming at us from one area or wasn't pulled to another. And then he just walked to the gate. And then um, we also did a self-created sound healing. Yes. Yeah. Where um, a psychotherapist um, brought in all these instruments instruments but like not your usual instruments just ones that were really different um we'll include some uh, photos mm -hmm. and we created collectively a pretty amazing sound session I yes guess. and and she started with a big indigenous style drum to keep us all kind of in sync so it wasn't just haphazard noises and i think it it was quite amazing and effective not only were we creating the sound but we were i would think healing from the sound as well mm -hmm. yeah. but we had so much fun just playing with the instruments and i think also because it was mindful we took our thoughts away from everything else and you were um concentrating on this activity which taking your mind to a, a single focus is a type of meditation mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. so i mean that was great and think about all the different types of self-care there. There's play. Yeah. There's interacting with others. Yeah. There's meditation. Yeah. You know, like there's, there's, it's not just one or the other. It's, you can do something that incorporates so much. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the different options. So that was a great, I really enjoyed that one. Mm -hmm. And then we finished off with <laughs> some hot and cold therapies that they had set up at the spa from, you know, the, the hot tubs the the saunas and then the cold plunge <laughs> and here's a little clip of what we got to go through <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the idea is this changing the hot and cold suddenly in your body is is a form of therapy and there's lots of benefits to the body oh yeah i could do a whole episode and if you are curious about hydrotherapy <laughs> 
Make a comment down below. I think it's so cool because anything that affects the body and can create huge change in the body, then also the mind and the spirit, I think are, are just, I don't know, I find them miraculous. So the cold uh, plunge was really cool. And then, yeah, the sauna and the hot tubs, everything was really neat. And they were all different temperatures. And then of course you're supposed to stay in one for a certain amount of time and then move on to the next. And it's, it's really Scandinavian style mm -hmm. of, uh, of spa. And then of course we also went for a little hike to their crystal garden which is out in the middle of the woods. And, uh, oh gosh, I mean, it started raining at that point. We had that cleansing, mm -hmm. but there's, there's grounding, there's connecting with crystals, um, and crystal energy. Mm -hmm. There's getting out in nature all in that, that one little activity yeah. as well. So. And it was, it was playful too, because, and connecting back to the inner child, how often do we actually just go out and play in the rain? How often right. do we actually just let ourselves get uh, drenched, you yeah. know? And yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that it was, it was very playful too, which I, which I, I, I you know I struggle with connecting with that kind of energy. Right. Cause we had to go, we had to use a map yes. and go find this place. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. And we even uh, came across uh, different spots along the way, almost like a little hunt. And we gave dimes for, to the fairies to of keep the them forest, happy yes. and uh we'll be sure to do an episode on elementals down the road as well mm -hmm. um because there's a whole bunch of them and uh, i'm sure you'd be very very curious to see what uh, all the different types and what they do because they're clever so not only did we do a lot of self-care we kind of opened the door to a lot of future episodes yes. and we're excited to bring all that to you mm -hmm. um and we would love to hear what kind of self-care you like to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear if there's anything that we suggested that you relate, that you resonate with, but also if there's things that you have come across that maybe we didn't touch on that some of our other viewers might be interested in that we would be interested in knowing more about as well. So please leave some comments down below on what type of self-care you really connect with and makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us in another episode. And we hope that you take some of what we talked about today and give it a try and, and treat yourself well because um, we really need a lot of self-care and self-love right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you like this episode, please give a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and then hit the notification bell. And then stay tuned for another episode coming soon. So, uh, again, thank you from Don and I. And we will see you guys soon. Be well.